I'll sit down and let you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, if you can't hear me at the back, just indicate, and I'll speak a bit louder, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to. Um, well, first of all, thanks for turning out on a damp November evening uh, to, uh, to what is a very specialist topic. Normally, I think the, the group uh, tends to focus on quite generic topics, which attract quite a, um, uh, have a, 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 a wide, um, a, it can, it can attract a wide number of people. But I was very aware when we were putting this together, that this is actually quite a specialist topic. And it's probably worth, worth just, just showing a little bit about, about why. And it's partly because this is a topic that uh, I've, known, I've noticed for some time is not getting covered uh, particularly well in the, in the UK and isn't being particularly well covered by the BCS either, despite the fact that, as we saw from the case in the UK, some of the pioneering work, much of the pioneering work, was done in the UK and, um, and, and, and defunded uh, by, by the BCS. So I thought it was really timely um, to, to look at this because it is one of the fastest growing parts of IT, one of the fastest growing roles internationally, it's also one of the roles for which there is a, a large school shortage. The data sciences and AI area always gets a mention. But if you look at the McKinsey research recently on this, down below there, just below it, is, is this area of, um, of, of people who can bridge the gap between the business and the technology, and organizations are struggling to, to get the talent. So, um, I'm just going to ask you a quick question, a couple of questions to kind of get a feel for the audience. I was expecting this to attract mainly people working in this field, but I could have been wrong about that. <laughs> so how many people here this evening are working in this field? They're BRMs, they're business partners, they're business engagement managers, they are business analysts with a major engagement role of the project managers with a major engagement activity within the PMO and again the major uh, engagement activity. Can I just see? Okay, all right. Okay. So a little bit more than half are here. And I guess the others are here, well, for the wine afterwards or <laughs> 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 No. I, I mean, it, it is a really quite, quite a fascinating topic. Anyway, so I, I will I will use the skills that we've got in the room because I'm very aware that with something like 20 or so people practicing in this field, um, that is a lot of uh, knowledge to, uh, um, to have in the room. Uh, if it's okay, I will use, use that knowledge as we work on this. Okay, so we're gonna, the, the format is, um, <coughs> is, is fairly straightforward. We're going to kind of have a, a workshop-y type um, uh, uh, session until about eight o'clock and we'll break for, for some more discussion of this topic and for um, some networking. And um, it'll be a mix of some pithy, hopefully, chalk and talking materials from myself and some interactions as well, because I know that you, know, you don't want to listen to me for that hour. Okay. So the agenda then is we are looking at this, at this, this area, which is um, how the business and IT engage. And the particular focus is on the roles that are emerging in our, in our organizations to to help that to happen. And they, as I mentioned, they, they come with a, a set of titles which we'll, we'll work through, but they're all very similar in, 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 in their content. Different titles, similar content. I thought we'd attack it in this kind of way. A brief look at the background and history, because I think it is interesting, at least for me, um, uh, how long we've been working at this as a profession. Um, and I'll sh share that with you. And I just wanted to showcase, because sometimes, it seems like the Americans invent everything, but actually the, the Brits have had a major role in this area, and I think I just want to, uh, to, to mention that before we get into it. Uh, I think it's worth just, just pausing, because well, I don't know you, but I love to have a whinge. So um, you know, why has this remained a challenge after, as I, as I explained, 50 years of work on it? <laughs> not, not by me personally, but it feels like it. And, um, and then, then, we'll, then we'll look at the, these roles, just bounce into them, because uh, some of you will be uh, working in them, um, but, but um, it'd be interesting just, just, just to see how that's evolving. And it's growing quite fast. There's some, there's some very useful material I'd like to share with you, in case you haven't seen it, around how organizations are approaching this area and using these specialist roles. And then uh, we might kind of time out of it because the, the material gets a bit dense at this point, but um, it, it is worth just uh, uh, um, 
spending a little bit of time looking at, well, what are these new roles doing? What are the people in these new roles actually doing <laughs> in, in, in their days? So sometimes uh, it's characterized that they're spending a lot of time sitting around having coffee, but there's a lot more going on <laughs> beneath the surface <laughs> than that. <laughs> um, and then I, the thing which excites me most about this area um, is, is, is what is happening, how it is developing, and what the, what the future is, is, is uh, I believe, has for this role. So I'll share a few, few observations, really, on that. Uh, much of this field is under-researched. As you can tell, I'm, I have a PhD in this field, so um, you know, I, I, I kind of, uh, I'm disappointed, really, that researchers have not done enough, enough work in this field. But it is under research, so a lot of this will be, will be um, anecdotal a little and observational. Um, there's more research to be done if anybody wants to fund it. So. <laughs> this is an area that doesn't really get funded. The, the slide deck is a, is a resource back. I'll just point off to some really useful resources. Some of you will have seen some of them. I don't think you will see more, so I think that will be useful to you. And I've also attached at the end of the slide deck uh, some additional material. So that's our um, what we're going to do. Okay. And this is me. Um, uh, I, I'm the chair of, of, of this, this specialist group in the BCS. I'm a researcher, as I mentioned, and I'm a consultant. But I've done quite a lot of work in this field. I got into it really because I was a, a, an IT strategy consultant. And as I turned up the organisation, I said, well, the strategy is fine, but our real problem is <laughs> that the IT department and the business don't get on. So could you help us work on that, and increasingly I've worked on that in an advisory capacity, and then in a set of interim roles. And I, I really am a kind of organisational tourist. I've been around the public <laughs> sector <laughs> and the private sector doing this stuff, and it really has been quite fascinating, because the problem is the same problem. <coughs> Wherever I seem to go, there's, it's like, but the, the approach to it is incredibly different from organization to organization because this is an area which is so situational and we don't really have um, you know, great uh, methods and standards yet for it. It features in quite a few standards but really at a very, very um, high level. And so it really is down to the practitioners like us in the room that are operating this field to really be kind of working it through. And I don't know you but I sometimes get disappointed with my performance in this area but I have to remind myself that we're actually creating it that it's, uh, it's not quite like um, driving a car. Uh, we are actually have to find our way through this, um, um, you know, this rich and difficult area. Okay, so, the history. Um, I don't know if you remember the, um, um, the, the film, I think it's, it's the Imitation Game? Imitation, Imitation Game, which, um, uh, uh, which depicted Alan Turing's work during the Second World War on the um, <coughs> cracking the Enigma Code. But it's, it's really interesting, there's a, there's a scene where his, his business sponsor <laughs> gets completely fed up with him and turns up to, to shut down the machine, axe the project, and, um, and, uh, and give him a fire scene. Actually, actually, there's a fire in the film. I, I, I don't know how, how much dramatic license there is there, but I understand it is, that did happen. And um, it, it, sh it shows that really quite at the very dawn of our profession, we were struggling with this area of, of the business and the IT people working together. I personally haven't been fired by the military in my <laughs> IT career. It may still happen. But, uh, but, but right at the dawn of, of, of our profession, we had this. And this was a strategic project. You know, it was, it's believed to have shortened World War II by two years and saved millions of lives. And that makes it, I guess, one of the most strategic projects in IT ever. Uh, I wish I'd done it. because. It is a fantastic project. Needless to say, although he was fired and he was shut down, uh, he went on to, um, uh, to, to, to create the, the computer. Um, so, uh, and that, that is also echoed, echoed with some of the work in business. So the Leo computer was, was built down in West London, where I live, and um, it's, it's reasonably well documented. And one of the keys to its, its success is a guy called John Simmons, who was, who, who, was described as the maestro of technology. He, he, he held the point between the top executives and, and the technical teams and made that connection. And that's one of, not the only, one of the, one of the reasons why Leo uh, was, uh, was, was successful. It wasn't 
commercially as successful as it might have been, but it was nevertheless successful. And for my own research, um, I, I, I know that the, by about, 19, by about the mid-1960s, the researchers were beginning to publish problems between the IT departments and the and, and business. And uh, Dean was a, a professor at, um, at, at Harvard, and there's a Harvard Business Review article, you can, you can kind of uh, see documents these kinds of problems beginning to emerge, and the linkage roles being posited as, as, a, as, as, a, as one of the solutions for this. You know, here at BCS, by the, by the mid-1980s, they were sponsoring work by Michael Law. Some of you who are in, in, in my kind of um, senior level in age will remember Michael Earl. He was the, um, he, 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 he still is around and working at Oxford. But in the mid-1980s, he was the world's number one in, in, in IT management research. He was a, a former IT manager. And uh, he, he surfaced this idea that, uh, this, this, idea that well, this, this phenomenon that hybrid IT managers, those that could combine IT and business, were particularly useful at bridging these gaps. This, this has gone on in, in, in the 1990s with government uh, building this stuff into ITIL, it's built into COBIT and ISO 20000, and the term business relationship manager began to emerge from that work. It's IT business relationship manager, managers that, that manage the relationship between IT and business. <coughs> and then um, we've seen in, in, uh, in the noughties, we've seen um, this growing incredibly fast, uh, this area, and the BRM is beginning to appear uh, all over the place, particularly in, in North America, where it has it's become a movement. The BCS was, the, I believe, the first to put, put down, lay down a, a certification in this field, and the ICED Certification in Business Relationship Management, which, which I did uh, very early on. And uh, <coughs> at the moment, we're, we're continuing to see that quite grow. The BRM Institute, which is a US uh, professional or membership organization that specializes in this field, um, has, uh, has, has, was established in 2014 and has grown to 6,000 members in about five years. Now that compared, that's one-tenth the size of the BCS. That's, that's quite a phenomenal amount of growth. We don't really know how many BRMs there are. <coughs> estimates in the US about 15% of corporate IT staff are now in engagement roles. Um, uh, and we're seeing in the UK the emergence of the title IT business partner is becoming more common. Uh, and I, the, the, the logic behind that is that in corporate services there are HR business partners, there are finance business partners, there are all sorts of things. So it, uh, it's not really that surprising to see that kind of title emerging, but both titles are around as well as business engagement manager. So we've, we've seen quite a bit of, of, of growth um, coming, coming through. And so and this, this, is, uh, this, is, this is Noddy Research, I don't... I won't get a page, another PhD for this, but this is looking at LinkedIn and just pulling up some of the organisations that have these roles at the moment. And so you can see that uh, this and in the UK, in the UK certainly. So I was trying to get a feel for the UK. It's not exhaustive; these are just examples. But you can see that that these roles are now populating much of the IT landscape in, in the UK. Not all, by any means. I don't know what the penetration percentage is, it's, it's, uh, but it, it's significant. But it's also growing as well, which I'll come, come on to later. So yes, this kind of give you a feel? You're getting, getting excited? This is, you know, <coughs> this, is this slightly surprising? Because they're, they, they, they're not, they're, they're not as, um, they're not hitting the press as much as, as AI and Terminator, are they? <laughs> <laughs> But the, this is quite phenomenal, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so I think so anyway. That's why, that's, that's why I'm sitting here, or standing here, rather. Okay, but, uh, bear with me for a second. You can't read this. You will be able to in a second. The, 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 there is still a problem, and this is why I continue to work at this. I don't go, okay, the problem is solved, because the problem isn't solved. Because this is from McKinsey. It's, it's very credible work. It's uh, global, uh, I, global, large global organizations that IT departments uh, sample size is about 700. And um, you can uh, you know, digest this at, uh, uh, from, the, from the slide deck, and I've also attached the, the link uh, into the slide deck. But 
just just look at what is what is what, what the feedback is from this. If we look at the the current, um, if we, if we look at uh, the, the, the different approaches that there are to to the to IT departments from supplier, where the IT department is treated as a supplier of technology services, through consultants, where the IT department is is brought in when there's an IT issue to be discussed, through to partner. If you ask most CXOs, they'll say, "Well, we really do, we really should be partnering and working closely together." And uh, convergence is, is where we're all going. But when you look at the, the data, although three quarters of the organisations know that that's what they should be doing, only about a quarter are, are owning up to any kind of achievement on partnering. From I guess it's from low to high, and 50% are, are have their IT departments positioned as suppliers. Yeah. And does that square with your? With, with what you're experiencing here, yeah. that the, there's, 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 there's a talk, and there's the walk, <laughs> and there's a gap. <laughs> and it shouldn't be, <laughs> yeah? Because this is potentially catastrophic for these large organizations as the fintech, legal tech, ex all sorts of tech uh, start to salami slice their, their core markets. And what is also interesting is that when we look at those organizations that have effective or very effective um, IT processes, it is, they, it is two to three times more likely that that is the case for those organizations that are partnering as opposed to those organizations that are not or in the other two categories. So you can, you can, what McKinsey are throwing up and why McKinsey and I and others are getting excited about this is that <coughs> we didn't know what we should be doing. We kind of have been working on it for, for 50 years. But the gap is huge, and the gap is important, and convergence is coming down, uh, down the railway line like a speeding train. Yeah? OK. You excited now? <laughs> I don't think you're as excited as me, but <laughs> I think this is incredibly important. <coughs> So why does it remain a challenge? Well, I was, I was, I, some of you uh, will have seen this, um, and we've got some limitations, so I won't be showing it. But um, if you haven't seen the, the, the clip of the, of the support center from the IT crowd, it's worth two minutes of your time just to see it. It's, but it, it, it depicts some of the challenges that we, that we have. The IT department in, in Denim Industries, they, they um, are having to deal with the business who asked them some quite ridiculous questions. It's very difficult to, uh, for them to uh, identify with them, but in turn, the IT department speaks to them in a, in a strange language and has um, uh, all sorts of other things that they'd rather be doing. And, and that has been you know, the core of the challenge, that we've specialised, and our IT people have one culture, and our business have another culture, and getting the two to work together simply isn't easy. I'm going to use your talents now. Okay. Five minutes in buzz groups. If you are from the same organisation, choose another, another person to, to, to work with. Remember what um, Simon said, that um, uh, you, you, you need to be careful what you say, uh, <laughs> disparaging about your organisation. But just, just share amongst yourselves, um, in groups of two or three in buzz groups, where your organization is on the engagement between IT and, and the business. <coughs> Positive and negative. I know I, I tend to tend to drone on about the negative, but there's the positive as well. Where where is your organization? Okay? Yeah, just so just shuffle your desk, your, your chairs around. I'm up here for a couple of days, so I just say it's just great that I'm, I'm up here and I look at what's going on. Hey, can you enjoy, enjoy your discussions to a close and come back? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, it seemed quite animated. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
So what sort of things were you, were you discussing? I'm, I'm really interested in, in your, your stories. Um, which, does anybody have any, discuss anything which is really amusing that can be aired on, on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Most amusing story, it was the one. So serious. Surely there must be an amusing story somewhere. Most insightful, then. We're, we are the BCS, and it's a studious organisation. In, insightful things that you were sure discussing. I think the internet's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get to become an internet star for, 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 for sharing insights. <laughs> That, that was the insight, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the insight is the internet is, a, is an inhibitor because of social media. <laughs> We're going to identify with that. Okay, all right. Well, let me, let me kind of add a few of mine then from, from my, uh, my organizational tourism. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a few things which um, are mistakes, which uh, you, you might identify with in some cases because you may have experienced them. Um, or, or if you don't, then just hold them in your mind. So, so this is, uh, I'm going to just give you three, three brief case studies. The, the first is global financial services firm, very big IT department, um, one of the 40 largest in, in, our, in, our, in this part of the world. And um, the problem, or the mistake, is, is half measures. And, and I've seen this in several situations. In this particular case, the, the, um, the, the CIO was, was a very experienced CIO, but wanted to introduce engagement for a particular purpose, which was that the level of IT and digital innovation that the company was achieving was too low, and the, and the top team, in particular the CEO, wanted to raise it, and they brought in engagement professionals to help them do that. And, um, and it was quite successful at that, but there were all sorts of other <coughs> issues that, that were in existence between this highly centralized IT department and, and the various business units, which, which, for which there wasn't an outlet, and came to these, uh, these engagement people um, who were really struggling to deal with that, and also they were struggling to deal with the, the centralised IT department. These are, are indeed, um, you know, it was staffed with some very talented people. So the, the mistake there is, is, is the half measures mistake. But I think what, what's, what's increasingly clear in this area is, and we've kind of, I can kind of understand half measures a decade or two ago when people weren't quite sure about this area, but the level, the scale of investment and, and track record now is such that it's, um, it, 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 it's, there's no reason not to go and do it properly. And so what I'm, what I'm kind of <coughs> highlighting there is that one of the insights that I've noticed is that organizations tiptoe their way into this, but it, it, that comes at a price, and uh, going in fully is, is a much better approach. The other problem I'd kind of, my, my practice, which I, if, I was, if I was with you, I would have been sharing with you, is, is what I call the piggy in the middle problem. And this, uh, in this particular case, I, I, I encountered it at a, a healthcare organization, um, a situation where the uh, underfunded, centralized, large IT department uh, was, uh, frankly, almost hated by the clinical business units, and a really difficult problem. So engagement people, BRMs, brought in to help deal with that, but just ending up as piggies in the middle between, um, two, between these, these, these two areas, and in, in some ways um, making it possible for the IT department to shield behind them and for the business units, who weren't that mature in what they were doing, uh, to to uh, load demand onto them, expected, expecting them to sort it out. I mean, that, that led, in this particular case, to an incredible turnover of BRMs, um, because they were just burning out in this, in this situation where they were caught between, um, between the IT department and, and the business. So I think it, it, the, the, the term BRM is, is the manager of business, uh, business relations, what well, relations between the business and IT, is not to be the person between the, the business and IT and to take the buffering from both sides, because that is really quite, um, quite demanding. I don't know if, if, if you've kind of experienced this, but um, uh, you, you can find your BRMs really having an incredibly tough time in this big in the middle situation. 
And also the other, the other, the other one, which, which uh, from my experience I, I'd highlight is is not the, not focusing in on value. So I've noticed that organisations, particularly when they <coughs> enter this space and build their brand, uh, sometimes don't realise that um, they think it's really about pleasing the customer. In this particular case, this is a, a government uh, organisation. The the BRM teams are are distributed out in the business units, and uh, and the uh, and the, there is that, that gap that we're talking about. But being out in the business units, that they identify very strongly with with those the, those business units and kind of go native. <laughs> they, they kind of got native when I arrived anyway, and uh, and they, and they, they everybody saw, they saw themselves as being about pleasing the customer term probably best not used in this context, but often used, and, um, and then finding that, um, uh, that, uh, um, that, they, that, that they were unable to really to kind of deliver on the promise that they were, that they were, um, um, uh, you know, that they were kind of implicitly making to the business units. And, and it also made them quite unpopular with the, with the, with the IT department, because it, it wasn't that they were, they were trying to... Um, Broke a good interaction between the IT department and the business units. They were trying to represent the business business units into the IT department, and in that way, simply perpetuating the problem. Now, now that is, there's, a, there's a good news story there, which is that the, um, that I put the all of the beer, all all of the people with engagement roles through the I, the BCS ISOP course, and uh, I would recommend this as if, if you're in this field thinking about this, because that really changed the way people were thinking about. The role of these these um, of these of these BRMs and, and others. That actually engagement is an economic activity as much as anything else. You can certainly be, be nice and have, have, have a good social time, but it's really an economic activity, and and that that really led to some quite different behaviours and some dramatic improvements. So I think there are, I, I highlight a, f a few of the problems that that, that that I've seen out there, a few of the insights that I've that I've come across. Sean. Yeah, the engagement rules themselves. There's a couple of just headlines I'd like to clear away before we get into the, these engagement rules, which are out of scope for our discussions. But it goes without saying that the CIO is the BRM in chief. The, they, they, they have a major role in engagement, and it's a topic possibly for another, another evening. But, uh, but there's this, I, I've again pulled out stuff from my, my friends at McKinsey, but. Um, uh, you know, the, there's a, a stack of research showing that when BRMs, well, sorry, when CIOs engage with the business on the business side of things, the uh, the effect for the business and on the performance of the IT department is is extremely positive. So they have a, a really big role, but they have a finite capacity, and the CIOs that I've worked with have to have to live in the executive corridor. And protect the the IT budget and and other uh, such things you have to do at the CXO level. So they rapidly run out of uh, of, of capacity, has been my observation. Um, not the topic of, of today's talk, but important to say that they are part of the engagement equation. And it's also true, important to headline that all of the IT people uh, have have interactions with. <coughs> Most of the IT people have interactions with the business, and when they do, that is a, 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 a point uh, for um, engaging well or engaging not so well. And it's also the other way around as well. The business has an obligation uh, to work well with, the, with their, 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 their technology colleagues. But our real focus is this area of business engagement managers, um, business relationship managers and uh, IT business partners. And so uh, I think it would be interesting just to spend a little bit of time on, on well, what do they do? Because although they have different titles, they do very similar things. And it does vary from organisation to organisation what the focus is. But they are doing these kinds of things. And I've borrowed this and adapted it from, from Deloitte. So I hope um, Deloitte are listening. I, I'm a great fan of this particular model. Uh, it's from their BRM team in the UK. It's not from um, their consulting practice. It's from their BRM team, and I, I find it as a really insightful, shorthand model for what 
these new roles are doing. I'll just, just bounce you through them. What I think you'll find is that for those of you operating in this area, you, you will be focused on some of these, but not all. But this is, this is a, um, a really good model for, for the options that are available. So one of the things that, that, that these roles get to do is to partner and connect between the business and IT. The business has typically got demand, the IT needs to satisfy, the IT function needs to satisfy that demand, and the other way around as well. The IT department is laying down platforms and infrastructures and opportunities and potential which need to be marketed out into the, uh, uh, or connected into the business. <coughs> Another area which the, these, uh, these folks are engaged in is being an ambassador. The, the conflict is almost inevitable at this time. Maybe going forward we will converge, but at the moment, the, the conflict is almost inevitable between these various specialisms. But they can play the role of ambassador and promoting the, uh, the IT <coughs> department and why it does what it does to the business and the other way around. Uh, working with the business to identify well, what is driving that business and helping the IT department, who of necessity are running networks and data centers and, and projects and services <coughs> and desks. Um, for them to understand it better. There's the area of, of strategists. Now, there's, there's grand strategy, but um, there is a kind of gap which opens up where um, the IT department needs to understand a bit further forward than, than they're typically engaged what is required of them. Often they're engaged late, often they're engaged too late. Um, but it helps the IT department if they can understand what the business is going to be demanding. And it helps the business well, it, doesn't, it, it does help the business to understand what their IT roadmap is going to be. Uh, now, in, in, in many, most of organisations, we have multiple business units, strategic business units. Um, so working with those business units and those central functions and, and other parts of the business to identify those IT roadmaps is, is, is one of the areas that, uh, that, that these new roles are, are engaging in. To give the, business, the IT, uh, IT department further forward vision and to help the, the business to work through what, what it will need um, to fulfill its business objectives. Translating, I don't know about you, but um, I find myself spending a lot of time uh, reinterpreting what the IT department has said for the business so that they understand it, and reinterpreting some of the things that the business say so that the IT department can understand well, what, why are they getting so worked up about it? What is this regulator? You know, why are we worried about this regulator? You know, what is compliance? Why are we worried about it? Yeah. You know, well, you know, it's, and, and you know, kind of, if you've done a CS degree and you're really into um, a technology stack, it really isn't that exciting for you. But it, 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 having it explained, if it's entering your world, is, is what these new, these new roles uh, do. Uh, I, I've experienced quite a bit of time spent as an analyst. You, you wonder why we would use these roles when we've got business analysts around, but we do a lot. They, these roles do pick up things very early and do some high-level business analysis on, the, on these roles. I know the business don't want to hear this, but often when they have ideas, they are very early formed. They're not very specific. They think they're, the, they're great. You know, they think they're totally clear, but they're not. And so these roles are often getting in those early dialogues, and it's sometimes called demand shaping, but, um, but really um, being a high-level business analyst and working, out, working with the business to help them to articulate it better and to shape it in a way that it will enter the IT department and its architectures and its platforms in a, in a, in a, in a slightly easier way. Marketing. <coughs> IT departments lay down these platforms and then they expect miraculously that, that things will be adopted and used and, and, and because it's, it's great and Microsoft also agree it's great. But, but these roles have a terrific role in driving out value, the ROI from IT, uh, by, by, by actively marketing into the business. They're out, in the, they're in this, in this middle role, and they can be in both in, 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 in both uh, areas and fulfil that. <coughs> and indeed, there's no reason that it shouldn't be seen as a marketing and sales exercise. It's, uh, it's it's perfectly reasonable to do that. And a final area, which which is which is innovation, which is um, uh, 
you know, it, it, is, it is often quite difficult for, for organizations, particularly big organizations, to innovate with technology, but it's never been more important to innovate with technology. <laughs> and because these roles are, are sitting in that, that hybrid area between, these, uh, uh, between IT and the business, they, they can help a lot with, with innovation. Um, taking to the business innovations that the IT department may be aware of, or indeed the roles themselves can generate, or working with the business to try and shape up uh, really innovative things. And for me, that's slightly different from the, from the strategist area, because innovation is very early stage. We, we, we are talking about future business as opposed to uh, driving existing revenues and uh, driving down existing costs. But uh, so, so innovation comes with a different profile and typically needs to be managed quite differently. And these middle, these, these uh, uh, engagement roles can have a terrific um, um, addition of value by helping people to understand how, that if it is truly innovative, then it needs to be managed to reflect that, managed to reflect the risk, managed to reflect the uncertainties, perhaps more experimentation, perhaps more proof of concepts, not betting the, betting the, um, uh, betting huge funds because we um, saw it on click on Sunday, and um, you know, so so managing that is really quite quite important. And, and IT departments have a tendency to want to do things in one way. Um, it's uh, it's either waterfall or if you're really fashionable, it's agile, or if you're really really fashionable, <coughs> it's, it's it's combining the two. But actually, there, there's a myriad of different ways of managing things, particularly at the innovative. Uh, end of things and tailoring is, is something that these people can do. So this is, I think, quite quite a useful fabric. What I think you'll find is that you'll, in, in your practice, you'll you may be in a BRM or a business partnering role, which is dominated by analysis. What so might be dominated by by partnering or strategy, or you or you may be focused on on innovation. Um, it's unlikely that that, that this is a descriptor for your, your whole role, though you could use the tick list. Um, but, uh, but all of those are, are, are candidates for value add uh, in, in, in various situations. What do you think? Yeah? You haven't seen this before, have you? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> for those of us that are, that are operating this field, we've been lacking this. I don't know if you struggle to... CIOs certainly struggle to, um, to explain to the organisations, particularly IT organisations, what these people are actually doing, apart from having coffee. Um, <laughs> they are, but this, this uh, they to, to tease it out a bit, yeah? Um, and these are things which your full stack um, developer isn't going to do. And the business might do, but they're very busy driving the next quarter's results. Right. Pushing on. I'm going to... Uh, I think I've made this point, so I'm going to jump across this for the, for the uh, because time is pressing. <coughs> so, what do these, what do you, these people, what characteristics do they have? Well, they're kind of, this, this, when you look at the characteristics, it's not that surprising. But it, it, it does show why there are skill shortages in this area. So first and foremost, the, I mean, the, the, the gurus in, in the US um, really emphasize the fact that as a BRM or business partner, you should not be turning up as a techie with the business. You should be turning up as a business person who really understands technology and knows what they can do with technology and can help them to exploit technology. If you turn up as a techie in this kind of role, there's been people doing that for a long time anyway, but it, it doesn't work out so well for you. So you can't equally turn up as a business hotshot. I've seen CTOs CTO turn up with the business and start to tell them uh, you know, how they should be doing their business. And that really doesn't go down that well either. <laughs> the CTO didn't last that long, but uh, <laughs> doing something in AI now, <laughs> another wave to write. Um, but uh, you know, there is, a, there is a, a skill set to be brought, which is about being a tech savvy business person, particularly when you're with the business the side of things. But that isn't enough. Because as Michael Earle's work and the BCS's work showed, the, the, the ideal is, is to be a hybrid. And I, th I suspect many of you are hybrids. How many people would regard themselves as reasonably hybrid? Yeah. 
So we've managed to attract a hybrid audience, <laughs> which is no great surprise, because the non-hybrids... <laughs> I'm going to cut it in this, this field. But there are limitations. I don't know about you, but I really struggle, because you have to know so many different technologies. Um, the, the secret, incidentally, is, is that you only need to know the technologies relevant to your industry and your organisation, unless you're an organisational tourist like me, in which case you keep having to relearn them. But, but essentially, there is a challenge in, 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 on that dimension of, of how do you stay up to date, how do you learn all these different technologies, uh, because the business can come in on all, all sorts of different ideas. So the, the, the hybrid area is, is quite important, but what is... What makes these people great or otherwise uh, wasn't um, quite so obvious back in the 1980s because we hadn't coined the term soft skills in the 1980s, but soft skills are, are critical. So being able to, <laughs> um, uh, you know, have, being, being able to kind of be empathetic, to be trustworthy, to be authentic, um, to play, play those kinds of diplomatic roles between these, these two very different uh, uh, specialisms of IT and business becomes one of the critical success factors for, for people in this space. And of those in this space, um, how many of you would kind of identify with that? How many of you think your, your soft skills are actually um, above average for your IT department? <laughs> Not all hands went up, that's interesting. <laughs> But you, you can begin to see, um, in a sense, why I get so excited about this area, but because it is, it is quite a challenging area. To be able to, to develop those skills and to deploy them consistently is, 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 is quite a challenge, isn't it? But that is the kind of, that's pointing towards the, the ideal uh, characteristics of, of us as business partners and BRMs, and it's a, it's a hard challenge. And, of course, you can never get good enough on any of these. Okay, so, um, pushing on, organisations um, moving out from the role to uh, what are they, what are organisations finding out there? Well, one of the most promising pieces of kind of industry research that's come through is, is that organisations are on a maturity curve on this. And I've, um, I've, I've included in the notes three of the, well, the three um, um, models um, for this area. They're all um, copyrighted, so I can't use them. But fortunately, I have my own, so we'll have to look at this. But, I, but if you type these into, into Google, you, you will get a hit and be able to look at them in some day. So, and they're, they're on the notes. And they are all very good. I would recommend particularly the BRMI's maturity model, which is beautifully um, designed and is uh, really quite nice. The other two are, are also good. Paul <coughs> um, <Warren> Merlin <coughs> is a Brit. He's an ex-EY partner uh, who left the UK many, many years ago to, to the US and has been one of the pioneers, which is why his is, is probably not quite so well designed and uh, beautifully uh, presented as the, as the more recent pair of my model. And then we have mine, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is essentially kind of uh, very similar to, to all the others. Basically, what we're finding is there is a maturity curve in the <coughs> and the organizations are at different stages of that maturity. If, you, if, you, if, if you're not actively managing it, then engagement happens anyway. And so organizations, some organizations are still very ad hoc about how, they, how the IT and the business area work on this. But the, but the basic level of management is, is that of order taking. I suspect some of you will be there and the research that we saw earlier indicated that something like 50% of organisations are down at this immature level globally, where the IT department is essentially taking orders from the, from the business. And I, I've heard them say, IT departments say, well, you know, if, if they tell us what we want, we'll build it. Well, you know, that, that is almost, almost feeding into an order-taking um, positioning. Yeah. Some of them have evolved using ITIL into a version of this, which is SLAs as... Uh, um, as, as agreeing what the business requires. So the business tells us what SLAs they are and gives us the money, we'll build it. But it's still quite an immature way of doing it. Whereas others are beginning to move up. We can see from the McKinsey work that maybe it's, it's, uh, maybe it's a quarter if you're really optimistic, but probably not in truth. Um, our organisations are kind of up at the higher end, where the, their engagement 
activities with the CIO, the BRMs, BPs, etc., are of, of generating a situation where they have become the business's trusted advisors on IT, particularly the BRMs and, and business partners, or indeed that they've moved into a more advanced stage where they are <coughs> they're not just regarded as advisors but, but intimate strategic partners in driving them driving the organization forward. I've kind of muted that we're heading off towards digital convergence. I don't think any of anybody here achieved digital convergence. You wander around your organization, you can't tell the difference between the IT people and the business people. No, 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 not me either, but uh, <laughs> maybe before I retire. Um, but that, that, that maturity curve is quite important because there's a couple of other things which kick in here, which is what is the maturity of the business and IT? And this, this, this also came out in my doctoral research. But actually one of the, the keys, the keys to enabling or disabling the ability to use IT strategically is, is how good the business is and how good the IT people are <coughs> at doing this sort of thing. So if you have a, a, an immature uh, business that um, you know, leaves everything to the last minute, doesn't think things through, thinks it's IT is somebody else's issue, and when they want it, they'll, they'll, they'll tell the IT department, hopefully when it's too late for the IT department to say no. Um, and, uh, or if, if, you're, if you're a te technology house, and I, actually, you know, you, you, you have got really good at all the taking in SLAs, um, you're not, not, but you're not really that great at, uh, at identifying business opportunities to, uh, to take on the competition. You're not really working in, in close partnership um, with the... Then, then, then those things will impact, because if, you, if you're down here, then it's very difficult for the BRMs to be up here. And one of the, one of the insights which, 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 which I've come away with over the years is, is that CIOs and CEOs will often appoint BRMs and or set their, their, their annual objectives as if they should be over here when the organization is over here. And then that's going to be really tough for those, 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 those people in those roles to deliver on that promise. By and large, what I do these days is if the organization I'm working with is, is down here, then I'm, I'm in there promoting order taking. <laughs> let's, let's get that, let's be the best order takers on the face of the planet whilst trying to, well not trying, but whilst moving the organization up, up these maturity curves. If they're over here, then, then I, no one's going to be impressed if I'm promoting um, order taking. I need to be up here as a BRM or business partner and be doing those kinds of things. So, that, that, I think, is quite an important model. Do you think you have to go through each of those stages, or can you jump from ad hoc into trusted advisor? So do you have to become proficient at each of those stages? Well, I, I form the view that it is helpful to work your way up. But I, I have seen CIOs parachuting people in here, and some success. Does that depend on how innovative your underlying organization is because if you're if you've got uh, you know, an IT department that is wanting to innovate and wants to change presumably then you can just jump away from order taking and completely move on to becoming a more strategic partner what if you can get your business to play with you as well yeah if, if your business is uh, is immature then on these things it uh, um, I mean an example, example that comes to mind is an NHS organization I worked with where where the the clinicians just would say we want it and it's it's good for patients so you know I, what, what is this funding problem that you're talking about you know so if, if you're down here then you know, your IT department's up here that doesn't actually happen in the NHS <coughs> because the NHS funding tends to pull it down the IT department back but if you were in that situation then then, then your business might be holding you back it, it doesn't I don't think it's impossible for BRMs to um, to push up here, and it will, it does vary across the landscape of an organization because we're generally talking about quite complex organizational landscapes here where we've got multiple business units, often multiple layers in the organization the global layer, the national layer, back office, shared services. <coughs> organizations are becoming very, very complicated, and one of the reasons why um, BRM has become more and more important is to try and navigate that. It's, it's often Quite difficult just for the business to know where they should, who they should be talking to in the IT department. Just dispositioning, as the term is, is 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 a is a value add that the IT that the BRMs can bring. They know that if you want to do natural language processing, you need to talk to the team in Leeds, headed by 
Jen. So yeah, I, I, I think you, you, you're raising some, some really great questions which we don't really, I don't think we have answers to yet. But I think what is true is that if you're going to push, if you're a CIO and your organization is down here, we know about 50% of them are, and you're going to drop your BRMs in up here, they're going to require an awful lot of, of air cover, support, TLC, and you're going to have to go around and when they start, when they're in tears of frustration at trying to get the IT department to do something. <laughs> Has anybody been there? Yeah. Presumably though, if you don't drop in a BRM that's capable of working at those levels, yes. you're never going to get out of the green. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true, yeah. And, and often down up, up here you'll find um, senior IT people and, and um, IT consultants being dropped in here. This is the, the province of X big four and X strategy house people to be dropped in up there. Um, they are they typically got a lot of battle scars anyway, so a few more won't make any difference. <coughs> Yes, I mean, these are great points, but you can see how, how, how this is beginning to kind of inform, inform the debate. I don't know how many people have come, come across these, these maturity models, but they've got a lot of traction now over the last five years or so, and, and, uh, and are helping the design of, of, of these, um, these roles to be improved. I'm going to um, put on two of the case studies because they're interesting to me, but I'm going to... I'm going to exploit your expertise again. Okay, so again, five minutes. Thinking about your experiences, if you've been a consultant or an IT manager or BRM, um, what has been the best advice on IT and business engagement that you have given to people in your role? Or, or what's the best advice <laughs> you've heard or read about or seen or noticed? Is that, is, is, that, is that question okay, or have I been too obtuse? <laughs> so what is, what is your, what's the best advice you've heard or generated yourself about getting I, the engagement between IT and business working well? New <laughs> <laughs> advice to a close. And, uh, okay, so um, uh, for, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. The, the best bit of advice I, I would give to people is, you, you, in, as a BRM, you are going to create huge amounts of value, but it's going to go unrecognized unless you actively <laughs> record it, report on it, tell people about it, and keep telling people about it. And if there's one, one piece of advice I'd give to, to BPs and BRMs, they <coughs> are not growing and marketing themselves enough. Okay. Other pieces of advice. Just uh, throw them in. Focus on the value side. Focus on value. That's really become that, that's great. That's that's a great piece of advice. That that, that has become the gurus in the, in the in the in the states are really focusing in on the realization of value because it doesn't happen enough. And the and these engagement roles can play a really critical role in making sure that value is really identified up front. The value realization plans are understood, and then coming back in, and if it hasn't been realized. I've done this myself. You, know, you come back in later, um, and, you and the value has not been realised, you know, particularly if it's if it's people being let go, and then and then you may sometimes have to specify another project, micro project, and realise those values and bring them around. Yeah, but there's a real trend, real push for BRMs to focus, help their organisations to focus on value. Other, sorry, other advice. So governance and bringing the right stakeholders in and having regular communication? Yes, yes, that's a great comment, yes. Yeah. And I think VRMs play, can play a terrific role in explaining governance to people. <laughs> because I, d I don't know what happens in, in, in your experience, but often there is, there is a, a governance regime which, the, the, which, the, which makes a lot of sense. But, but it's usually uh, in some documents that the business knows nothing about. Yeah. And so, not surprisingly, they go off and create shadow IT or get somebody they, they, they worked at uni to, to knock something up because they don't understand. And governance has become really critical, uh, particularly around security. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, protecting the organisation. I think you're there and then IT, okay, hang on a minute, and then suddenly the project goes on. <laughs> There's a showstopper at the end of the project, yes, I was realised. Well, that's fine, that's fine. Yes, 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 I could, I could uh, 
<laughs> it wasn't that, but I didn't include them. But yes, yes, okay. Uh, one other final piece of advice, the last opportunity to be famous on the internet. Well, not only value, but I think value needs to be quantified, even if it's soft, and it needs to be delivered early and incrementally. Yeah. Agile adjustment if you're not delivering it. The idea of delivering value in a few years when the big project done is, of course, big bang, water, all that. We're done with that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah no, that's a great comment. Uh, triggers a couple of things in my, in, in my, my experience. Exactly the point that you're making. The, the uh, engagement roles can work with the business and IT to, to shape that, that value curve. Because often it's a kind of, there's a choice sometimes. You can kind of have all the value coming through at the end, but sometimes you can get some quick wins early on. And, and the, the, the goal often in, in, in IT consultancy is to, is to get the quick wins, to generate some cash, to make the pain a lot less. It, it also points into this area of, of portfolio management. <coughs> which um, fits into the PMO in a, in a, in a large uh, IT uh, organization. But the BRMs need to play a role in that, in shaping the portfolio. So it's, instead of everything coming in um, and the portfolio being the sum total of whatever has been come through in this order taking situation, to shape the portfolio so that the portfolio is, 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 is better shaped for risk better shaped for, for value creation, better shaped for, for the cash needs, better shaped for the critical skills that the, that the IT department is, is struggling to, um, uh, to, to acquire is, is a role that the engagement team can have. Yes. I've got a question about that. We're saving money for the business. We're spending money on I, in IT to save money for the business. Why aren't we thinking of how the finances can be converged so that we're looking at the whole business? Yes. Uh, value and the whole business costs. Yes, yes, I think, I think that's, 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 that's a great piece of advice. And I, I guess that's a component of this kind of convergence idea as well. But and I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not um, uh, countering it, but some of the organizations I work with are still on annual financing cycles. And some very large some organizations which you'd expect to be <laughs> much better at this than they actually are actually just sit down each year and say, say to the, the business units, well, what do you want and, and, and to do next year and, and, and how much is it going to cost? Or the IT department in, engage in, in, in that with, with the BRMs. But, so so I, I think, think we've got a way to go, but that is, that is, the, that is the ideal. Okay, all right. Well, that's a good, some really good bits of advice there, yeah? Which, uh, I would certainly pay for. <laughs> <laughs> A little biased. <laughs> Pushing on then. Um, I did. I did. I keep talking about um, <coughs> this myth that the BRM has spent all their time drinking coffee. But um, what I have included in the pack is is some work which I've been doing, looking at uh, job descriptions over the last four or five years as they've been coming out. Uh, some of them I've got because I've applied for jobs. <laughs> some of them I've got because they're, they're up, up on LinkedIn. But uh, I've put under each of these, these things the kind of, of really um, tangible processes that the BIMs are engaged in. So on partnering, for example, they are often uh, approach that by mapping out the stakeholders for the IT department and mapping out the IT stakeholders for the business. They, they often <coughs> have... Uh, they, they often schedule partnering meetings on a regular basis and, and, and have those partnering meetings. These are really tangible things, effectively processes that they're running through. They often uh, look to see which relationships are not so good and actively plan those, and there are techniques for doing that. And um, similarly, on the ambassador area, it's extro ex extremely common in my experience, either... Um, Formally or informally, for the BRMs to become an escalation point, to have oversight of the of the um, uh, the uh, service now uh, incidents and the response of the service desk, so that they can <coughs> somebody says, I, "I ordered this laptop for my new employee, and they've arrived. They've been here two days. You can go in and have a look and see what's actually happening." Um, and 
on the area of, of strategy. I mentioned roadmaps, but um, um, and we've, we've kind of touched on that demand management area as well. Uh, these are really tangible things which these, these, uh, these folks uh, uh, can do and do do. So um, in terms of translating the governance area around um, policies, um, reframing some of the frustrations, um, bringing in the I mean, I, I personally think that it's a really good idea if at least some of the BRMs on the IT senior management team or wider management team, because then they're bringing actively into those discussions their understanding of the business. As an analyst, there's a whole stack of things, value management, high-level business analysis, which uh, they can get involved with, do get involved with. On, on marketing, again, uh, communications programs, um, looking after the internet content, <coughs> On innovation as well. Um, there's, there are tangible things that the, that the BRMs are doing out there which are essentially BRM processes or I call them activities. So I'll, I'll leave those with you. I mean, I, I, I kind of invite you to have a scan through them. Uh, are there opportunities uh, for you to expand your, your portfolio into them? Uh, are, there thing, are these things that the organization uh, could, could be doing more of? And I think that what, what this has yet to feed into is good BRM tools uh, to do these things, good yeah, BRM sure. process models, good BRM um, uh, parts of ServiceNow and or, or indeed standalone uh, BRM uh, systems for doing this. Um, some, of, some of the organizations I've worked with and within have um, started to formalize these things with, with tools like SharePoint, but we don't yet have the tools or the, or, or the BRM data models, something I'm personally working on, uh, to, um, uh, to uh, bring these processes into a more formal and mature position. But it's undoubtedly the case that BRMs are out there now um, doing really tangible things. They have coffee too, instead, but they are doing really tangible things. A quick, a quick word on, on how, how, do, how are these functions being organized. There is a, a very common model, but as I go around, these organizations, they, it, it, is, it, it is substantially different in each organization. But the common model is for situations where you have a complex organization with multiple business units and your, your IT provision is, is quite, um, uh, quite sophisticated too. The BRMs are typically organized to face off the business units and to cut across uh, these, um, uh, the, the uh, IT provider ecosystem. And that makes it quite difficult. Right, can you just tell me what an SMT and an SBU are? Well, sorry, SBU, this is, this is MVA speak, I apologise. SBU is strategic business unit, so, um, or line of business you might call it, or it might be an internal corporate function like HR or finance or so on. SMT is senior management team, so the senior management team of the organisation, and I've left that blank for a second because there's a reveal. But um, you, you can see that this, this is a very common way uh, to organize it. Some BRMs have multiple business units. When I was at the NHS hospitals, I had three clinical directorates. Um, I had to keep reminding myself which one I was, was, was working for. Um, but uh, um, so it's not always as neat as, as that. And then the SMT usually warrants special attention from the CIO or from the um, lead BRM. And again, it's not always that neat. Often the lead BRM is short of people, so it ends up doing that and SBU or two. But um, it's uh, that kind of organization of the engagement role uh, <coughs> the business. And then having the discomfort of playing across the, um, uh, the, the IT ecosystem is, 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 is very common. So it does vary a lot. And there's a whole stack of things at the bottom which cause it to vary. I will jump across this, and we'll jump across this, because time is the ultimate diminishing asset. And um, a few words on the future. So I think I mentioned that I'm actually quite excited about this role and where it's going. And uh, I'll just share with you a few things which, which, I, which caused me to be excited, <laughs> because I don't normally get that, that excited. Um, uh, Joe Peppard, some of you might know Joe, he was, he's, uh, he was at Cranfield for many years as a professor. He's now gone to um, 
um, to the US. They've offered, offered him more money, I suspect. But anyways, at MIT, which is the epicenter of, of some of this stuff. And, um, and he's uh, a, very, a, very, a very smart chap. Um, and I think he's making the point that um, the challenge now is not just to develop a digital savvy IT department. And I don't know about what your IT departments are doing, but, but many I work with are, st are struggling to bring on board these, these new digital technologies um, over, over and above their core ERP systems and their, and their legacy infrastructure. But he's pointing out that that is not the, uh, the challenge anymore. The question now is how to organize the entire firm for success. And he's saying that's fundamentally different. And this is the idea of, of convergence. Now, I, I am personally think that the, the, um, the, these, these engagement roles, I don't know what, what your experience is, are at the forefront of real convergence, as opposed <coughs> to talking about it, or Microsoft having massively expensive conferences about it. But I think we, we are playing a, a role in helping organizations to get there, and indeed, um, not only the vanguard of it, but laying down some of the, some of the road towards convergence. <coughs> That's a kind of conceptual thing, and a long way out. There's more stuff which, uh, which, which excites me more immediately. I, I jumped on the... Uh, on LinkedIn to see who is building new BRM functions today. Have we got to the level of maturity that new that BRM functions, uh, new BRM functions are not being laid down by substantial organizations? No way. These organizations are laying down uh, new functions, legal and general down in Hove, a big function being brought up, Islington, Southend on Sea, Carphone uh, Warehouse out in Acton, laying down a new team. <coughs> And some individual roles at organisations I would not have expected. Associate British Ports up in Hull, laying down a completely new team. Even the Church of England is, is, is out there getting their foot. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. God is going to be our end. And Portsmouth Hospital have been trying for some time to get somebody to come and be a digital PRM out in that area. So the, 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 the movement is continuing, yeah? yeah. And, and I will only have picked up the, the ones which are visible, the ones which are invisible, will uh, dwarf these examples. But these are not uh, small organisations. So this, the adoption is continuing. The adoption curve is continuing onwards, which leads me to be really excited about it. But there's also the other thing which makes me excited is actually there's a lot of work to do. There are an awful lot of, of I've called them failure patterns. <laughs> Which, which are now visible to us after a couple of decades. You know, I've mentioned some of them already, um, like the uh, piggy in the middle problem. But the, there are some other fact failure patterns which are very visible as well. For example, not reporting into the CIO is a real problem for a BRM out there. And, and, and my advice to CIOs is, you know, drop some of your other reports. You know, get at least one of these BRMs reporting into you. Because uh, uh, otherwise, you're just not going to get the benefits. The revolving door of CIOs. I, I'm, I'm almost speechless sometimes that one CIO comes along and, is, and has the hots for, for these people and sets up at great expense a BRM team. Another CIO, CIO comes along who doesn't get it and disbands them. And I think, why? Yeah. But it's, it's not uncommon. It's, it's, and it's happening today in substantial organizations. And this is why I, I kind of bang on about the BRMs need to make sure that they are marketing their own value in the organization because no one else will do it for them. So there's a whole uh, uh, <coughs> stack of things which we need to work on. And in, in eliminating these or reducing them, the PRM function becomes um, more more attractive for people like us, I don't know about you, but I, I, I find it a very wearing role. Um, you, know, you, you do get a lot of toxic dumping. People just dump on you the things that they don't want. If it's career enhancing and really sexy, you don't hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, I exaggerate, I'm unique on this. <laughs> but, but there's a whole stack of things which we, we can do. And I also know from my research that political action is a real problem for us. We can get caught up in, 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 in politics uh, very easily. And politics and IT don't mix very well anyway. <laughs> so I think there's, there's work to be done, and I'm, I'm putting work into this. Uh, I think the, there's a research agenda here, maybe even the BCS could return to do more work in this area. 
But there is also this, this, this role is not just growing in, its, in the way that it has emerged, it's extending. So uh, some extensions I, I just, just point you into, because I think it, it, it speaks to growth accelerating, but not... I mean, I mean, we must eventually run out of big IT departments to build BRM teams in. Um, and it, but that still leaves us with making those BRM teams better and better and better. But there are new roles that the BRMs are, are picking up. So in these complex structures, and the NHS is an example, where you have national level, regional level organisations, <coughs> BRMs are emerging at those different levels. My observation is that although they're emerging, the coordination between them is not that great yet. So it's beginning to emerge, but it's not that great. So I worked for a large organization recently. They had um, uh, global BRMs. Um, I'm not sure what, I, I was one of the national level BRMs. I'm not quite sure what the global BRMs were doing. <laughs> they never told me, <laughs> and we never told them. And, uh, but what an opportunity. What an opportunity to link those two together. Similarly, in the NHS, <coughs> England have BRMs last time I was up there, which is, a couple, which is a year or so ago, have BRMs covering the national agenda, because there's a substantial national IT organisation, and many trusts have BRMs, not as many as you would think. <coughs> but getting those, those working together, almost in, not just in concert, but almost as kind of um, conspirators. Yeah. <laughs> it may not be the right word, but, you know, understanding what your what the BRMs in other parts of the organisation are, 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 are working on and doing, and helping them to, uh, uh, to uh, make this divide, uh, this, this gap narrow, and the, the journey to convergence speed up, is, is, is a real possibility as these BRMs begin to populate these different parts of our organisations. I've noticed across the Deloitte, I, 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 I keep mentioning Deloitte because I actually think they've got a fantastic team uh, across there, um, not just because I'm on the internet, but they do have. They, they were early into this. Um, they they, they filled with the model that I've, I've shared with you, which I find really useful. Um, but uh, uh, they've had, I think, the same BRM leader um, since its inception. And uh, it is a BRM team that has done some, some stellar work uh, across at Deloitte. Um, but they, what I've also noticed at Deloitte, that, that, that Deloitte have, have started to use BRMs in other areas. So particularly between, I can identify this dramatically, between the information security people and the, and the business. You know, because, I, you know, you think IT people have, a, have, have, have their own language. I mean, information security people have <laughs> taken it to a new level, has been my experience. And I, I spent quite a bit of time recently in trying to explain to, to the, um, a couple of things to the business. One is that it doesn't matter whether you like it or not because they have got so much power that you're going to have to do it. But also why they're doing it. So why is information protection so key? And interestingly, McKinsey have recently come out with some research where they've been looking at successful AI or data science teams. Those that, are, that are, organizations have been, um, I think the problem globally is manifesting something like this. The big organizations know that data, AI, machine learning is really important. They've been developing these teams. They've been deploying them into the organizations. And the impact has been nothing like what they were hoping for. Uh, POCs have been proliferating, but really the kind of follow through into dramatic stuff has not been happening. What, what McKinsey have found is that they are far more successful where there is a translator role between these AI teams and, and the business units. And I can identify that because the, the typical people, high-end people in these teams are PhDs in AI. That's, the, that's what people are really looking for, PhDs with data science skills. And they have another language. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, convolutional neural networks. Try explaining that to the average MD. You know. And so they're, 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 I think the point I'm trying to make here is that um, we have matured and pioneered this role into between one highly technical area, which is the IT shop, the IT department, and the business. But there are, as, 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 as digital really impacts more and more, and, and, and then there are others for it to expand into. And the one which I would also 
going to point out to you, I, I can't work with the organization because <coughs> I'm under a, um, NDA, but I, I've noticed several organizations who have this characteristic, which is that they are that either fully or partly their product to the customer in, includes software or digital components in large measure. And that it's B2B, and the relationship is as important to the customer as the software. It's not a one-off purchase. Uh, the relationship is important. And there are <coughs> CTOs out there at the moment in those, in those firms beginning to look and experiment with dropping the, the BRM and business partner um, <laughs> <laughs> business partner uh, um, uh, role into that situation to, to drive revenues because often what's happening is the businesses that they're serving want to do things but they have to navigate their way back through to the, to the techie back office to make the changes and in that chain a lot of time is being built up a lot of revenue is being lost and I think I think this is this is this is going to fly. I could be wrong. Um, I have been in the past, but I think this is this is really well worth looking at. Using BRMs to drive revenue far more d directly than they have been in the past. <coughs> so I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted before then you, you you head off to um, uh, to the wine is just just to point you into some things which are in the pack. Um, there are two major certifications. Many of you will be familiar with these, but just in case you're not, there are two major certifications. Um, one from the States in, in, in business relationship management and one from the BCS. And I've uh, pointed those in if you want to formalize your, your, your skills or get yourself certified. I've also pulled out, there are only four significant books worth reading. About <coughs> there are only four books. They are all worth reading, although the BCS one is dating a bit. There's still an awful lot of value in it. So I've, I've pulled those out with the Amazon link. I don't get any commission, but those, those are four. And I've also included in the pack towards the end the contents pages so that you can kind of, um, you can't try before you buy, but you can have a look to see what, what, what's in it. But if, if you are the sort of person like me who, who reads a lot, these are, these are worth, um, uh, uh, worth what is a relatively small amount of money and are full of wisdom. The latest one is from Paul Merlin, which <coughs> you'll, you'll notice towards the end of the book, he goes into, uh, in, in, into a, a long discussion of his, um, of his hobby as a, as, a, as a musician. So you can leave the, the, the back end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> but the front end is quite good. And that's the, 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 the more recent. And the, there is a body of knowledge which has emerged. It hasn't been built by the BCS. I'm, I can't report. It's been built in the US by this organization called the BRM Institute, it's a membership organization. And uh, unfortunately, to get to it, you have to become a member, but it isn't a huge amount of money. But there's an awful lot of stuff there, including a lot of tools and documents and so on, which you can take in a doubt. Not as many as I'd like to see, but, but uh, a lot. All worth looking at. Okay, we're going to head up to questions in a moment, but I want to leave you with a task because we're going to head into networking shortly. And I, I want, but I don't want you to kind of just, just go and talk about how Arsenal are doing or not doing. <laughs> what I want you to do, to do is to go away with the task. Las Vegas rules apply, which means what, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, so <laughs> you, you won't be on the internet anymore, so <coughs> it's sound But, you know, you know share, share your, your stories, you know, because I think there's terrific... In, in this room, we've got almost half a millennium of experience here. Yeah. Um, it's a terrific experience to, uh, to use. So uh, you share, share the stories. And also, you'll see that some of us have got these, these, these snazzy gold badges. That means that we're actually um, volunteers in the BCS and sit on, on a committee, which, which uh, so we organize this thing. So it's uh, people like Simon and Antonia and Colin and myself. So if there's more that you would like us to do in this area, tell us about it, and, um, or indeed, not even in this area, in any area. We'd be really interested to hear what things uh, you and your colleagues would turn out for on a November evening. <laughs> okay. I, I'm happy to, to, to take questions individually and to take questions 
out with the wine, but are there any questions which you'd really like to ask in plenary? What would you say is the main difference between the BCS and the BRMI approach? Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm a great fan of the BCS um, certification, and it is a very good certification. Um, I, I've, um, I, I could tell you stories uh, about how I've used it, but, um, but, there's not, but the, the BRMI's qualifications are also good as well. And the, what the BRMI are able to do I think this isn't actually legal in the UK, um, but they, they do give you um, post-nominals, you know, letters after your name, which you don't get with the BCS certification. And they also now have different levels. So I think you become a, um, a BRM, a certified BRM, and I, they've now, I don't think anyone's got this yet, but you can now become a BRM, a master BRM. It might kind of be a master gunner, really, but um, this, is, this is America. And the... the BRMI's courses are done in the UK. Um, they're both very good. There's, there's nothing wrong with either of them. Has anybody done the BRMI course? BRMP. You're a BRMP? We have a BRMP. And, uh, I've done the ISEP course. Um, anybody done the ISEP course? Gosh, what, what, a, what a marketing opportunity. For <laughs> okay. It's on the site. Uh, well, well worth doing. Other questions for plenary? <coughs> it's specifically not to you, but maybe to the Do you Are you aware, some of you colleagues here, if the BRM, it's not just for the IT function, but for the entire set of processes that the back office is providing to the business, like order to cash, record to report, procurement, this kind of thing? Do you have do you know the organization where this, the BRM is playing a big role more than just IT? Has anybody got any organizations where the BRM or business partner role is, is proliferated beyond the, uh, the IT function? Or aware that someone is implementing? There are a lot of organizations where business partnering is, is, is uh, used in the HR department. <coughs> uh, that, that's very, very common. Well, and it's a little bit... Uh, Positively surprising. <coughs> it's another long discussion, but yeah. because uh, yeah. I'm aware of a lot of cases where the BRM is not the BRM of the IT, but of the everything which is helping oh. the business to manage the information, which is moving from the function <laughs> driven to the process driven <coughs> information. Okay. Because what you are mentioning just at the end, bringing the value. At the front, on the front sales organization. In fact, this is the entire process of sales, and the same for the procurement, the same for the maintenance, the same for sourcing. Yes. I mean, this is where technology is required, and the BRM cannot be just for procurement, just for HR, just for this. And that's why there is many cases where the BRM is more than just for IT. Well, I, 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 I'm a little bit. No, okay. no, I, I wanted to share this and to see a, your reaction. Sorry. No, that, that, that's, that's a great piece of sharing. I, I do know of organisations who are, who have business partners or business relationship managers uh, in, in other areas, and that excites me even more. And uh, I'm um, So two, two questions really. One is, in your experience, what's been the, the life cycle of a BRM within a, within an organisation generally? Because generally you kind of come in to, to bridge that gap between IT and the business, and that's done. Uh, second question, which is then, what's next? So what is the career path for someone who's in the BRM role? Yeah, yeah. Two, two great questions. What we're seeing in the States, or what the BRM Institute is seeing in the States, is that the, uh, the, the, the BRMs are <coughs> in post far longer than anybody expected them to be. I think in the US now, they're, they're, I think they're averaging about eight years in, in mature BRM roles. Um, so now you've got to compare that with CIOs who barely last three years. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why this CIO <coughs> revolving door is a problem. The BRM is going to be there longer than the CIO. It's going to go through three CIOs before they move on. You know? And so you, know, you, can, you can end up with different, different levels of uh, support from those, those different, BRM, different CIOs as they come through. <coughs> so I think, I think um, um, we, we are, what, I, what we are seeing in the States, I think, is, is that people are seeing the BRM Role as a destination career. They are getting into it and specializing in it and enjoying it 
and, and staying with an organisation for a significant amount of time is helpful for that particular role uh, because you, you get to know the people, build your networks, etc. Conventionally, we have seen the PRM role as a, as a good stepping stone, not by any means the only stepping stone, um, to CIO ship. And, it, and I, I do personally believe it is a good stepping stone to CIO ship. And you can see that around the world. My observation is that in the UK, that is less true. Because when, they, when CI, CEOs go to appoint CIOs, the thinking seems to go something like they must have spent a lot of time as a director of IT services. You know, I, you know as, if, if, I, if I've got deficiencies in my, in, my, in my CIO and their business side, I can make up for those. If they, don't, if they can't keep the data center and the infrastructure running, then I'm in deep trouble. And I think that's a mistake, um, personally. But, uh, so I think we've got some slight differences uh, uh, across, the, across the Atlantic. But I, I just kind of point out that I think we are seeing some extraordinary salaries as well in the USA. I saw a job which just, just came across um, the airwaves this, this week. Um, and it was a beer and roll in the States, Phoenix. I don't know what Phoenix is like, never been there. I'm sure it's wonderful. $300,000. That's, that's a serious amount of money. <laughs> anyway, great questions. Okay, Fran, I think we've, we've overrun for very good, honourable reasons that it was a great subject matter. So, can we have a round of applause for Alan? Um, just a couple of things to say. Um,